In other videos, we've seen how to get started with ePaper displays and how to control them using an ESP8266. We've written an Arduino software that allows us to upload images to the ESP8266 and display them on the ePaper screen. In this video, we'll go over the process of building a frame where we can put the screen in and modify the Arduino software so that we can have a slideshow of different images playing on the screen. We'll then be able to upload any image we want to the ESP8266 and have it display on the ePaper screen. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering a wide variety of deals for the holiday season and the spring festival. Make sure to check out their coupons so that you can save while placing your PCB manufacturing and assembly orders with PCBWay. They were kind enough to send me a care package for the holiday season. As always, I was impressed with the high quality of their boards. One thing that sets PCBWay apart is that they're not a broker. Rather, they're a PCB manufacturing and assembly house. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. For this video, I'll use a development board for the ESP8266 that carries a connector for the ePaper display. I'll use additional hardware to build a picture frame where to put the screen in and also mount the development board for the ESP8266. As usual, you can find all of these products in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Assembling the picture frame is straightforward. I won't go over the details, so I'll leave it up to you. And if you're interested in the software side of things, feel free to skip ahead in the video. With the picture frame assembled, we can go to the website where we have the demos for the ESP8266. As a starting point, I'll be using software for another video that allowed us to drag and drop images onto a web page and display them on an LED matrix. With the code open, I'll need to start getting rid of the pieces of code that I will need for this project. We were using these definitions and functions to display the images on an LED matrix. In order to display images on an ePaper screen, I'll open the Tools menu, select Manage Libraries, and install a couple of libraries. The first one will be the WaveShare ePaper screen library, and the second one, the Adafruit GFX library. With the libraries installed, we can use the File menu to look at different examples. I'll open the SPI flash file system example for the ePaper screen and copy a few definitions and functions that I'll need. These functions and parameters are all I need to send images to the ePaper display. So with those changes made, we can start working on the code so that we can upload images and have a slideshow playing on the ePaper screen. We can start by including the file system library so that we can store the images in the flash file system. Next, we can use the definitions from a different example so that we can communicate with the ePaper display. To establish the communication with the ePaper screen, we'll go into the setup function and call the initialize method of the display object. Then I'll define a boolean flag so that we can use it to tell whether we want to display the slideshow on the screen or not. Now in the loop function, we can use the boolean flag to run the slideshow. The way that'll work is that if the flag is set to true, we'll display each picture in memory every five seconds. To display the images, we'll call a user-defined function called displayBMPEPD. And before moving on to define this function, let's go ahead and upload the firmware so that we can test things out. 
We'll connect the ESP8266 development board to the USB of the computer, go through the tools menu option and select the correct port and port. And we'll also remember to select an option that allows for the SPI flash file system to exist in the memory of the ESP8266. We'll need the IP address of the ESP8266, which we can get from the debug message we're printing to the zero monitor. With the firmware working, we're now able to upload the web page that we want the web server to send to different web clients. Now that we're able to upload images to the ESP8266, we can go back to the code. Working our way a little bit backwards, we'll want to stop the slideshow every time we upload a new image. A little bit differently than in the other video, we'll be using bitmap images as opposed to JPEGs. So after adding the ability to process that extension to our code, we can go ahead and start working on the functions that will allow us to cycle through the images. To start the slideshow, we'll use a user defined function that I'll name handle display start and we'll use a similar one to stop it. Both of these functions will be called every time the web server is accessed over specific routes. The functions themselves will set the displayed slideshow variable that we defined before and this variable will determine whether the display is showing images or not. In order to display all the images in flash memory, we'll use a couple of global variables to know the number of files and the current file that is being displayed. So when a user sends the request to the web server to start the slideshow, the handle display start function will cycle through all the images in flash memory. We'll use the display objects methods to configure the screen accordingly and the file system functions to cycle through all the files in memory. If the files are in bitmap format, we'll increase the number of files that are available and we'll be sure to reset this index at the beginning of the loop. Before getting into the nitty gritty on how to send those images to the display, let's make sure that we remember to send a response to the client. Stopping the slideshow is somewhat easier, we'll just need to set the global flag to false and also send a response to the client. With the start and stop functions of the slideshow in place, we can start working on the actual function that's displaying images on the screen. Similar to what we did in the start of the slideshow function, we'll cycle through all the images, but this time around we'll keep track of a few things. Whether the file has the correct extension, and also if we cycle through all the files in memory. After this couple of checks, we'll call the draw bitmap from SPIFFS function that we got from the GXEPD2 library earlier in this video. With those changes in place, it's time to test out the code. We can go ahead and upload it to the ESP8266, use a browser window to access the index file, and drag and drop an image into it. Make sure that the image is already in the correct format and size for your ePaper display. Now when we access the start route of the server, the ESP8266 will start the slideshow and show all the images in memory. Similarly, if we've done things correctly, when we access the stop route, the slideshow should stop. So now, let's test the code with additional images. I'll go ahead and grab this painful memory of me running, use some photo editing software to set it to the correct size and file format, drop it into the index.html file, and once again access the start route of the server so that the slideshow is resumed. If everything goes according to plan, I should see both images in flash memory being displayed every 5 seconds. So there you have it, we've modified some firmware to allow us to upload images to the ESP8266 and have them displayed as a slideshow on an ePaper display. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. 
You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.